O amado, ao mesmo tempo que o odiado Dark Souls 2, já teve o seu remaster aqui com Scholar of the First Scene. Mas a gente fica se perguntando assim, como é que seria o próprio não só o Dark Souls 2, mas a trilogia do Dark Souls, se fosse feito moderno, né? Será que seria numa pegada meio que do Demon Souls? Bom, o um mod meio que fez praticamente um remake. É uma parada que melhora da noite pro dia. Vamos dar uma conferida pra ver como é que ficou. E galera, se curtiu o vídeo, não esquece de deixar aquele crítico aí no like. E se inscreve no canal, cara, porque a gente faz vídeo aqui todo dia. Mas, ó, nosso react de hoje vai de um vídeo da Digital Foundry, que mostrou pra gente como é que tá esse mod. Então, como sempre, eu vou estar tá linkando o link deles aí na descrição pra você poder ir lá e deixar aquele seu like, porque o trabalho deles ficou bem bacana. Mas vamos dar uma olhada como é que ficou esse mod aqui, se realmente fica numa pegada remake. Bora lá. Eu vou comentando também alguma coisa por cima. Mano, olha, olha só, até se a gente for parar pra ver assim, já vê uma diferença, né? Dark Bichinha. Souls 2 is an often overlooked entry in the Souls series, despite just how unique it was in experimenting with its mechanics Muita and gente não gosta, né, mano, back in 2014. Do, 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 do. In being sandwiched between the now iconic original Dark Souls and developer from software's later efforts like Bloodborne, it's at times forgotten, thought of as an experiment. A tangent that wasn't followed up on. Even so, the modding community around Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, is blossoming on PC right now. And among the most remarkable mod yes, offerings of the game engine. is this. Well, there's a link to the mod in the description, Lighting tá? Engine. Vocês Essentially, Lighting Engine is a replacement of the game's original engine that allows major changes to its visuals and offers a toolbox of sorts for others in the modding community to go much further. Mano, a gente tem que parar aqui pra falar. O nível que os mods os caras chegam, os caras chegam a fazer um mod que troca a engine. Ah, que é isso, cara? At its core, installing the Lighting Engine mod adds new anti-aliasing options like NVIDIA's DLAA and Opa. AMD's FSR, replacing the FXAA post-processing of the official release. We get volumetric fog, Olha. vastly improved shadows, ground truth ambient occlusion, and it even rearranges foliage, trees, and oh, terrain mich... with new meshes. Really, this Botou até mais vegetação, mano. With more work in progress features to come. Que eu, já, eu já ia falar com vocês, olha a diferença que faz só mexer na luz do jogo. Porque, pô, olha só, você consegue ver aqui que a, a árvore tá botando uma luz aqui nela mesma, né? Como é que dá uma diferença você só mexer na luz do jogo, sem aumentar polígono nem nada? Mas os caras conseguiram até mexer na vegetação, mano, absurdo. Much of this begs the question, is this the Dark Souls 2 remaster that we've essentially needed all these years? Of course, Dark Souls 2 has technically already received a remaster of sorts with the Scholar of the First Sin update in 2015, a year after its initial release on PS3, Foi Xbox só um ano 360 depois, né? and PC. The idea back then was to upgrade Dark Souls 2 from DirectX 9 to DirectX 11 with improved lighting, textures, enemy placement, bug fixes, while also é. bundling the first three DLC expansions. However, é, um pacotão, despite né? this suite of upgrades, visually speaking, Scholar of the First Sin still falls short by modern standards. Uh -huh. Certainly, it doesn't live up to the captivating early trailer of Dark Souls 2, the E3 2013 reveal where Caraca, interplay trilha, between mano. light and shadow was a major mechanic of play, uh -huh. where wind physics and volumetric effects played a bigger role. All of this was ultimately dialed back in the final release, and even failed to make the grade in Scholar of the First Sin as well. Ten years on then, it's impressive to see at least some of that early promise realized by an advanced mod like Light Cara, Engine, a as advised véio. by a fan of the game. So, what does this mod do? Many of the upgrades, a in tá with the chão. Dark Souls 2 Lighting Engine creator directly, are achieved by reverse engineering the pipeline. He explains, in a similar way to RTX Remix, it's able to detect the G-buffer when lights are rendered, and even Dark Souls 2's depth buffer is reverse engineered. Beyond that, other effects are achieved with hooks within the game code itself. Cara, ficou muito Meaning, bonito, mano. Once a shader is loaded for the first time by the engine, that triggers an immediate response from the lighting engine to engage. With that in mind, let's start with a comparison Olha isso, of the mano. added Como é que tá muito mais atmosférico? Effect. Volumetric fog is added into many areas now with the mod, layering on top of the simple baked light shafts we already saw in the original Dark Souls 2. Here you get a proper volumetric fog effect filling the space, which in a pleasing way does bring it a step closer at least 
to that 2013 Dark Souls 2 no, reveal trailer. Cara, essa fumaça ela é necessária pela profundidade. Huge folder of shader files, and by reverse engineering the game's depth buffer, a clean volumetric effect is created with no Z fighting or artifacts across the distance. Most interior areas show off best. É, o interior é bem, foi bem melhor. Adjusted color grading that adjusts by the map. Meu amigo. Assim, ficou mais hazy, né? Que as da, fum... next, da neblina. Pô, tipo assim, eu, é... em certos, certos pontos, tá um pouco mais parecido com o Elden Ring, eu diria, né? O Elden Ring ele tem um jogo de cores mais, é, mais gritante, mais vibrante, assim. Mas tá um pouco mais parecido. Em alguns casos, acho que uma área mais fechada ele tá mais bonito que o Elden Ring. Concordo? And at most. These upgraded shadows take advantage of the almost fully deferred rendering approach in the lighting engine mod, which again interprets the base game's logic to implement higher quality soft shadows. Note how characters and objects in the environment, notably those overhanging trees, now cast shadows cima. from most light points, and even the sun in a more realistic ah, manner. Tá de baixo da sombra, still, this mod even offers multiple quality settings, ramping up to the PC SS option for NVIDIA's contact hardening soft shadows, which allows for diffuse shading to appear the further an object is from the light source. Proximity between that light source, the ground, and occluding object is simulated in the end result, meaning player shadows will often logically look sharper nearer the ground. It's Caraca, not ray tracing, but the final effect of adding new shadows to the map, plus switching the game to PCSS, is an incredible feat of engineering. The environments Sim. are more richly shaded, and it makes it hard to go back to the original Dark Souls 2 areas, absent of shadows as they are. To explain how this is achieved in the mod creator's own words, Cara, once the debuff of the geometry nenhuma, draw mano. is complete, the draw call data is cached for all players, enemies, and a few other important meshes within the scene. Using this cached data, the shadow map for all lights is rendered in what's described as a large texture atlas, just before the lighting engine begins to process the frame. From there, the clustered rendering compute shader will run through all local lights in a single dispatch for lighting and shadows across the scene. The result being accurately simulated shadows dynamically moving in response to every object within the environment, rather than only select objects. Mano, olha a diferença, cara. Sticking with the shadow upgrades, let's check out a few interior spots. Secondary lights, like torch lights in connecting dungeons, now of course cause the character to cast a proper shadow. In fairness, we already had shadows cast from bonfires and the sun in the original Dark Souls 2, but their application was limited elsewhere. Torches on dungeon walls simply Ela. cast no shade as you walk by, tá, which ele is a limit that's nenhuma. even true of Elden Ring today. É. Ah lá, the falei, lighting pô. engine mod fixes that, é melhor do que o Elden Ring. PCSS, we get these sharp shadow outlines on nearby surfaces from torchlight. Additionally, as a bonus, the lighting engine allows specular highlights to bounce back from these torches. With a more... Cara, olha como é que ficou mais... Olha só, porque tipo assim, o ambiente todo ele tem essa cor mais esverdeada, né? Aqui um pouco mais azulada por conta da fog, né? Da, da, da neblina. E aí você vem com essa cor quente aqui da tocha iluminando o cenário. Como é que fica rico artisticamente? Onde aqui a gente perde, né? More detailed reaction across the nearby stone. Note how the torch on right creates more accurate directional lighting around the archway. We also benefit from a much higher quality ambient occlusion, known as Ground Truth AO, which is also seen in engines like Unity. Fundamentally, this is a more accurate and less approximate variant of ambient occlusion that limits the so-called halo artifacts around a player as they pass, say, a shaded corner or grass, which remains a problem with the vanilla Dark Souls 2's built-in AO. As you'll no doubt see in the comparisons, GTAO darkens the game's environments quite visibly, sim, sim, especially in mesmo. No Man's Wharf. The need for a torch to light the route ahead is more crucial than ever before, which again is a point that plays a little closer to that original E3 concept trailer. É, é, assim, isso, isso, é, isso é um ponto, mas não chega a ser... Lembra que a gente fez aqui um react sobre o Dragon's Dogma, que fez o Path Tracing? Não chega a ser uma, uma modificação tão hardcore igual o Path Tracing, apesar de que olha essa diferença nessa imagem aqui, né? Mas... Assim, fica um pouco mais escuro, mas ainda fica um escuro que é utilizável, né? Não fica um escuro igual algumas áreas daquele mod de Path Tracing, assim. E, tipo assim, 
o Dark Souls ele tem essa mecânica de você usar a tocha, né? Então acho que é interessante o cenário ser escuro mesmo. All of this is presented at 4K resolution and here I'm using the newly added NVIDIA DLAA setting, which clearly tidies up rough geometric edges more effectively ah, than the base game's FXAA. Nenhuma. Beyond that, the engine adds many tweaks to the world's detail itself, many of which you'll likely have spotted already. Firstly, there's the new foliage and object placement, notably across the Forest of Fallen Giants. It's worth stressing that collision data is not changed with the lighting engine uh -huh, mod então served as is, so the boundaries of gameplay are intact from the base game. However, new elements like grass Olha and also sol. trees around inaccessible areas now embellish outdoor regions, and of course, these all now cast shadows. With a few exceptions, like a new mountain asset, I'm told that these assets are sourced directly from the original game with no modifications. Changes to the code also make the game more performant. Grass, for example, is now batched and rendered in as a single draw call to reduce CPU load via the lighting engine mod. As for the hard geometry of Dark Souls 2, we now have adaptive tessellation in place. This increases and decreases polygon density based on distance, while in general, world LODs are pushed out, allowing us to see more distant terrain across the horizon. It's again very Caramba. impressive stuff. Mano, como que os caras fazem esse mod todo ficar mais bonito e da melhor eficiência, velho? The good news is, in terms of performance, the lighting engine mod runs with relative ease on modern systems. The RTX 4080 in my test PC, for example, took this on at 4K resolution with PCSS shadows enabled and I was still hitting around 100 FPS in every area uh. using an FPS unlocker mod here. Oddly enough, I couldn't get um mod to go than FPS, a 100 né? FPS cap, which appears to be an issue with the original game connected to some output devices. Ah, mas Still, FPS tá bom, aside, né? this proves the point that these lighting engine changes are not so taxing that a locked 60 is impossible if that's the goal. É, On a tá more general 40, level, 80, né? also impressive is the lighting engine's mas debugging features, também. which are accessible by pressing the F1 key. Once enabled, a window appears at the top right, letting you see all of the parameters for lighting, fog, GTAO, and the color grading. The debug viewing modes even let you see ambient occlusion and normals rendered in isolation in this handy split view. It truly raises the curtain on how each buffer combines to create the final frame we all recognize. Meanwhile, press the F3 key and even more options open up on left. The creative opportunities truly open up from here. Texture packs are easily installed by uh -huh. dropping them into the game's install folder, plus using the lighting engine mod's creator tool on F3, it's possible to paint new objects into Dark Souls 2's world, assuming you've the time to adjust the collision meshes that go with it. Cara, Indeed, some in the Dark Souls 2 modding scene, like Chris Leo and Rock Dash, use this toolset to create some beautiful results, shown on their socials. Really, it underlines what a flexible tool it is, if you've the creative impulse, and also crucially the time to see an idea through. Ah, mas a galera tem. Go, the lighting engine mod makes adjustments with some faith to the original game layout, and I think there's some value in this. It does, of course, allow for an easy swapping in of new texture libraries from the Nexus mod vaults. Mano. But at its core, this mod does it. But at its core, this mod vaults. But at Porra, its core, que droga. swapping in of new texture Pera libraries. Olha, olha só, tipo assim, a, 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 como é que ficou? Tipo assim, é, a, é o mesmo chão, mas olha como é que ele tá com a profundidade maior por causa desse negócio também, né? Do, do ambient occlusion, tessellation, que ele falou ali. From the Nexus mod vaults. But at its core, this mod does enough on its own to transform Dark Souls 2. Cara, isso aí que ele falou então é sem meter mod de textura, mod das putarias todas que a gente tem liberado já. Imagina então a gente somar isso com os outros mods, mano. Absurdo. It doesn't end here. Looking to the future, the creator of the lighting engine mod is also busy at work on a similar upgrade for Dark Souls 3 with GTAO, screen space reflections, volumetric fog, plus Nvidia's DLAA and AMD's FSR options planned for the third game. 
Still, what's in the lighting engine already deserves huge credit, and the manner in which it reverse engineers a 2015 PC release makes you wonder what more is possible. Thanks again to the author of the lighting engine mod for sparing some time explaining how it was put together. But that's all from me today. Mano, if you muito did find foda. this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video and many more, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But for me for now, thanks for watching. Mano, simplesmente absurdo, tá? Os, a galera do mod conseguiu fazer o Dark Souls 2 em alguns pontos ser mais bonito do que o Elden Ring. Cara, é, é absurdo demais, cara. Absurdo demais. E legal ver que ele tá fazendo também pro Dark Souls 3. Então, assim, não vai ficar... Pô, imagina, assim, uma, uma hora... A gente fica pensando no Bloodborne, né? Se o Bloodborne lançar pro PC em algum momento. Se, se, não, precisa, se não vier, via remaster, né? Não só do jeito que foi pro PS4. Às vezes ele pode fazer alguma coisa, assim, pra ficar... Pô, imagina um Bloodborne com esse modzinho aqui. Não, ia ficar bonitaço demais. Mas e aí, rapaziada, o que vocês acharam desse mod, assim? Achei cabuloso. Novamente, o vídeo da Digital Foundry e do mod, eu tô deixando aí na descrição pra você testar aí. Eu acho que definitivamente vai dar uma cara nova pro Dark Souls 2 e vai dar também pro Dark Souls 3 também daqui a um momento. Vou ficando por aqui, rapaziada. Se curtiu o vídeo, esquece aquele crítico no like, se inscreve no canal, segue a gente nas redes sociais. Falei, um abraço. Até mais e fui!